Hi there. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm uh, Alejandro Kikuchi or Kiku from Workana. I'm sitting at home right now in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, because of the pandemic, uh, we are only going to our office a couple of days a week. Um, the world the world changes fast and 2020 was crazy in that regard and now we are uh, into 2021 and Workana is working closely with tech startups supplying them with a framework to to reliably hire and work with remote talent which can be full-time or project-based right I'm, I'm talking software developers digital marketers designers content writers our model perfectly fits this new normal we are experiencing while helping companies save time and money along the way. And additionally, as parts of our efforts to deliver value to our community, we are hosting these sessions in which uh, industry leaders share their insights and, and journeys and strategies. We, we've conducted these sessions with tech companies such as um, Pictochart and Fave, Lalamove, Superhands, uh, as well as big established uh, corporations uh, like Petronas and Rekit Benkiser. So today's session is going to be quite unique. We'll talk about esports. For that, we, go th we got the true expert in the field, Alan. He is an esports evangelist who worked with Air Asia for seven years, the last of which was heading the esports department. And he is now the regional head of marketing, marketing and PR for Evos Esports. That's the leading esports organization here in Southeast Asia. So let me add him to the stream. Alan, hi. Everyone. Hi, hi Kiko. Do I call you Kiko or Alejandro? Yeah, no, Kiko. Kiko is fine, yeah. <laughs> hi, Kiko. How are you? Thanks for hi. inviting me. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for joining. Thank you. And uh, Wokana for inviting me to the stream. And uh, yeah, happy to share about eSports today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd love to, to hear about that. Thank you. So can you please uh, start off sharing a little bit about yourself and, and, and the company you're with now? Hi, my name is Alan. I'm uh, heading up regional marketing and PR at Evos Esports. It's an esports team organization based in Southeast Asia. We have market presence in Indonesia, Thailand, Malaysia, and Singapore. And most of the games that we play are mobile esports titles. And we have raised up to 16.4 million US dollars to date. Um, from Series A, Series B, from investors. And uh, we have clients such as Visa, Lazada, uh, PopMe, et cetera, which I'll share more uh, exciting information about the space. Thank you. Uh, definitely, yeah, looking forward to, to hear about that. So um, can you please share a little bit about your background? How is it that you got involved with esports in the first place? Yeah, sure, definitely. Um, just sharing a quick uh, bit, I was actually involved in paintball, you know, the shooting game for about 10 years. Uh, it's my small little business. I was an entrepreneur back then. And uh, that's where I got this kind of like sports uh, experience and background. And after that, I was uh, seven years in AirAsia. Um, during my seven years in AirAsia, um, I was doing other stuff such as uh, regional marketing, uh, business development, etc. And I somehow bumped into esports. Uh, one day, a pilot came up to me on my fifth year and said that Alan, Tony Fernandez, the owner of the airline, he knows about esports. I'm like, what is that? I used to play games, but I never heard of this term esports. This was in 2017. And uh, he said that Tony Fernandez knows about uh, Twitch. I'm like, what on earth is Twitch? I haven't heard of this uh, alien language before, you know? I'm like, how come my boss knows so much? I need to Google. So when I Googled it, I found out, wow, Amazon bought Twitch close to a billion US dollars back in 2014. I'm like, wow, that's a big deal. How come nobody in our company talks about it? Uh, I decided to dig more information and found out, wow, the market esports is really huge. The projections, the graphs, the charts, right? It's a future-proof kind of uh, industry and a billion dollar industry. And I created an esports jersey. This kind of experience I learned previously when I was in doing paintball. Because back then, people don't know about paintball. I mean, you approach, co approach uh, corporate companies, the more senior people, I would say, were like, what's that? And mm -hmm. same with esports. You know, the Asian culture over here, 
in Malaysia especially, when I tell my colleagues who are more senior than me about esports back then, they were like, what is that? Then I explained to them gaming. And when they heard gaming, they thought it's a bad word, like uh, you go to the casino and gamble, gaming, you know? So oh, like, right. Oh, yeah. So I, I don't know, Kiku, for you, have, have you heard people say gaming is casino and stuff like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's um, So you need to start tossing in online gaming, video ga- Video games is clearer, right? But, yeah. Yeah. So, so after that, I realized, okay, Houston, we have a problem, you know, uh, this needs to be a lot of awareness internally before we can even do marketing or branding about esports, because you need to like uh, create awareness among the whole organization. And being with Azure back then, you had 20 over 1000 employees. How do you do that awareness? So I created this esports jersey. I spent about 4,000 ringgit, that's a thousand US dollars. Um, and this money you can't claim back from the company. And I gave a hundred pieces of jerseys away to the C-suite executive, branding, marketing folks. I gave one to one of Azure's uh, chairman, Dr. Kamarudin Ranun, Tony's partner. Uh, and then uh, I gave one to Tony Fernandez as well. And it just went viral. And within six months, we sponsored an esports team. Yeah. Wow. Um, um, and also within the six months, we have our own employees esports team, team building, you know. Um, back then, it was a double-edged sword. You want to do good stuff, but then a HR will say, Alan, why are you encouraging our employees to play games? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, uh, need to do a lot of work around uh, awareness. And because of this uh, project with our employees, I got to invite it to travel around the world to share it because um, a lot of people share with me in the US, Europe, Alan, you guys are fast. I'm like, what do you mean? Usually a big corporate company takes about two years to enter esports. I'm like, really? They're like, yeah. <laughs> One year for esports awareness, education, and then another year for budget approvals. You know, big companies, right. the budget approvals. So, yeah, we did it within six months. Of course, thanks to our bosses who were very visionary at that time, both Tony and Dato Kamarudin. And yeah, we, we sponsored a team. We, we uh, bought over a mobile agents team as well. And we sponsored Alibaba's uh, esports tournament, WESG. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's great. And it's great how and I mean that's a, that's a that's a great story. It's great how you managed to do some disruption, right, with the jerseys yeah. and 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 a unique way of drawing attention to this. Yeah, I think you can call it growth hacking in a way. Right. Hacking the system <laughs> and uh, uh, you know in a good way. Um, I actually like gave it to all the head of departments and I told them, guys, this jersey costs about ten US dollars. 40 ringgit but i'm giving to y'all free i just need one favor from y'all every thursday in the office every thursday wear it so they wear it you know so imagine in a meeting room full of people full of people wearing the same jersey like, hey where did you get it from what is this <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah so that's what happened and uh it, it eventually it took off and uh our branding and marketing teams we got the buy-in and we have our own esports team we did uh, a lot of like uh hijack marketing if you may say yeah, other brands are having their events at a shopping mall and then we'll send our team there we send our ass to with us there it was fun <laughs> Fun, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about to say, fun sounds precisely like the right <laughs> way of describing it. And so, how did this work for the? So it 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 mostly was an internal initiative, right? For for Air right. Asia's own employees. It started how, off that way. Right, right. How did it help in terms of of connecting different departments or you know team building? So I saw that uh, Azure's vision back then was uh, to become a digital company, not just another airline. So I realized in the digital world, when you want to attract talent, you need to um, give them what they want. You know, you don't put a volleyball court or a traditional sports and they won't get attracted to it because it's the same old, same old. You need to do something different that appeals to the next generation that can resonate with them. And I realized that esports and gaming was really catching up. And we even got sponsorship back then from like Dell, Alienware, Razer, and Secret Lab back then to sponsor our gaming room. So we have like a 12 unit full on spec PCs. And they will <laughs> nice. attract uh, digital talent, you know, especially those tech engineers, et cetera. They want to join a company that's cool and happening. Right, right, right. That's great. So it's it helped not only for strengthening your existing teams, it's also good for recruiting. That's right. Uh, good for recruiting, employer branding. Yeah. 
Right, right, right. Wow, wow. That's that's great. That's great. All right. So that's 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 how you got started with esports and and what all you did with AirAsia and getting to travel around the world. Um, you even gave a TEDx talk, right? About that's right about esports. Um, how we created the uh, internal awareness because most companies out there they just like um go go ahead and sponsor maybe a few months or one year and then they stop, which is not really good in the space because you need to show, they call it the A word in the US, authentic, you know, you need to be mm. authentic, you need to show commitment. You can't just like uh, dip your toes a bit here and there and then pull out. And then the, right. the fans, they're very engaged, they're very, uh, they're very passionate and then they'll call you out, you know, on Reddit, on Facebook, social media, like, hey, this brand, and they just, participate for a while so yeah yeah i think it's very important that um especially for those listening in if you're from a marketing or branding role uh, my advice to you is to get your feet on ground like um, what i did also i actually went to the esports events back then before pre-covid right and then i i went a lot of uh lunches dinners with the esports community just to understand get into right. their, head, their hearts and mind because i'm not from their world i'm entering their world so you need to speak their language etc right i don't know right, how about right, you right. uh kiku do you play any games yourself i i do yeah yeah oh, not, okay. not not participating in tournaments but yeah i play my share of starcraft um fortnite it's been a while um <laughs> i never got good with fortnite <laughs> yeah so here's the yeah. thing um when, when i just share a quick experience when i flew a lot to the us and europe people say oh yeah alan esports is uh, about fortnite league of legends overwatch but i'm like um yeah but that's more in the US western side right in the asia side or southeast asia we are more into uh, mobile games like uh, mobile legends pubg mobile free fire wild rift for example so yeah uh, it's very different. So um, there's this debate going on, right? There's two debates which I'll share shortly. One debate is like, oh, esports is just PC games, right? Which mostly right. the West uh, concur. But in uh, Southeast Asia and Asia, it's uh, mobile, which is really picking up. So the West kind of like can't adapt to that uh, mentality yet. They think PC is more, more powerful or better than uh, mobile. Uh, because of um, you know the the amount of money you spend on a PC or even console. Right. After sharing with them uh, about mobile, they're like, "Oh wow, the numbers are really big, and the events are just the same." You know, esports is not just playing games in front of the screens, especially for parents out there or, or those in the branding marketing who are just tuning in for the first time to learn about esports. It's actually a big, huge uh, production. Uh, stage you know there's a whole production element to it it's like a full-blown concert guys i'm not sure right. kiko have you seen any esports I, uh, opening ceremony yeah 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 they can they can they're crazy and the, the finales and the, are of course uh, there's there's what comes to mind and what makes the headlines is usually the big prizes right and mm. by now um i i guess everybody's a bit more used to that but a few years ago you know you would see that there were there would be a prize for a few million usd and wow and and that's that's what started uh giving people i get the idea of the dimension yeah involved. i mean games like uh i think games like dota and league of legends really helped because of their production value and the uh, amount of prize money is insane right i mean before right. COVID, uh dota uh, ti they call it the the international is about 34 million US dollars. That's like right. way much more than other traditional sports. And I think that uh, opened the eyes of many people, per se. Right. And then parents, I think parents are now more open if their kids want to do esports or gaming. Yeah, go, 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 you know? Right. Last right. time, it's very difficult. I mean, due to the, especially Asian mentality, is very uh, conservative, you know? When you grow up, you know, son, daughter, you must be a lawyer, engineer. Yeah, yeah, or a doctor. Uh, <laughs> doctor, yeah, this tree, yeah. right? So nowadays, like, you know, what can I and all that? It's all tech. You know, it, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, a couple of years ago, back in Argentina, this, there was this kid who um, earned a, a local, uh, won a local tournament for Fortnite. So his dad starting, uh, you know, allocating, helping him. He was still in school, of course, and started helping him have more time for training, uh, like after school and whatnot. And some people were criticizing that, oh. and then but then others argued, and I I agreed with them that traditionally that happened always. If if a kid got good with tennis, 
and won some local tournaments, then it would be normal for the parents to start encouraging the kid to play more tennis and train. So why is it not the same with esports, right? Wow. Which, I think uh, which... that's right. Um, you're, you're right there, you know, Kiku, like I was in the US and the parents shared that it's become a, like a cultural phenomenon in over there, right? The kids, they'll go to school and uh, during the break, the, the kids, they will go inside the bathroom and just look at what is the latest Fortnite dance, you know? And then they come <laughs> out and then dance in front of their friends. And then their friends <laughs> like, wow, wow, you're cool. It's become a cultural uh, subculture oh, already, you know? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but, but somehow to the older generation, it's like, ah, you guys are just um, wasting time. You don't know what you guys right. are doing, which is funny. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And and it's great what you're sharing about mobile gaming on, on mobile devices, How, which I guess it makes sense, right? Because uh, gaming on mobile uh, has been evolving a lot. In, well, as devices evolved over the past few years. And what's great about that, it's that it opens the door for more people to join, right? Because if it's PC gaming, you need to spend a good couple, a good, a good couple thousand bucks uh, USD, right? On getting the yeah. right kind, the, the right setup with mm. mobile, you need a decent phone, but that's still far more accessible. Yeah, I mean, nowadays, most of the games, they, you don't need a decent phone already. Even a mid-range mid, mid -range or low-end phone can work for certain games. Right. So, yeah, it's really interesting. And uh, I feel that uh, the parents nowadays are more open. You know, like back then in our era, when we say, what do you do when you want, when you want to grow up? As a, in a, when you're young, then you put in the form there, you know, or police, uh, soldier, for example. Yeah. But nowadays, every kid is putting YouTuber. Yeah, sport. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's changed. And so I think, I think, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, in, I, and I think similar thing. If so, in a different way, but it's happening to businesses, right? And the story mm -hmm. you are sharing. I mean, AirAsia embracing esports as a channel or tool for strengthening their their own teams mm -hmm. is is a great example. Yeah, um, I think it is a shift in mindset as well because Asia was. Uh, Sh uh, shaping towards becoming a digital company back then. So right. uh, I kind of saw like, okay, this one is uh, related, you know, this esports gaming stuff is related to digital, you know, no two ways about it. So it's just a matter of uh, seizing the opportunity and uh, coming in from different angles back then. So back then for us, uh, it was employer branding, it was uh, marketing, uh, it was also uh, employee engagement, you know, right. internally. And uh, also reaching out to the community, being relevant to your customers, you know, yeah, especially the young ones who like to travel and do a lot of uh, budget hopping and all that, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. right. Back, yeah. Backpacking, et cetera. Backpacking, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, definitely. Mm. So, so can you share now a little bit about your current um, uh, engagement with EVOS Esports? Uh, yeah. Because I think what's interesting about Eurasia is how that got developed in a company that's originally at least about something completely different it's an airline right yeah. and then shifting and when and they're working with esports as a tool for their own teams as an internal tool and now with evos esports and the sponsoring and work you do with with the different teams and you mentioned great clients such as visa or lazada so yeah can you share, share a little bit about what you do there Sure. So like for Lazada, we've been partnering them for over a year. And uh, what we do is we have our esports talents, uh, gaming talents. So they will live stream on Lazada's uh, platform. And at the same time, Lazada will use it as an opportunity to reach out to, to their younger audience. And uh, they, they look like for a Free Fire team or Mobile Legends team of players, you know, like a talent search per se because there's a lot of uh, players out there, so you don't really know who is who. So they create a talent search, etc. And uh, the numbers are really great, you know, reach to the millions, because our talents are like their own, uh, if I may say, like their own uh, Beckhams or Maradonas, right? <laughs> right. Their own followings. And uh, what, what um, brands or marketeers previously did not know that in the esports and gaming world, there's a difference with traditional sports. And one of the main differences is that uh, in traditional sports, your David Beckham, you cannot talk to them, you know, you can only see them in live interviews on the TV, and it's a one way communication. 
They right. can't hear you. But for esports and gaming, you can type there what you feel, what you think. Oh, your game was good, you know, and the player can respond to you like uh, Kiku. Yeah, thank you. Oh, wow, he called me Kiku. He, he recognized me, you know. They call it, right, wow, right. Senpai, it's a two-way conversation. Yeah, two-way thing. Senpai noticed me, and then if they like you, uh, they like your uh, aura and your they can resonate with you. They'll they'll give you donations, you know, like uh, Facebook stars, for example. Uh, they they tip you on Twitch, you know. So it's a big deal. It's a win-win for everyone, you know. Uh, it's like a on on demand entertainment, and uh, it happens on a daily basis. And there's so many entertainers around the world. It's like owning your own TV channel. Like you, you Kiku, you can also do your own live streaming tomorrow, uh, like what you're doing now. But imagine entertaining people. They like you. They find you funny. You're playing games, and then they actually tip you and give you star donations. Right. And these streamers are earning a lot of money. I mean, the top ones, like in the US, you got people like Ninja, for example, N I N J A, Tyler Blevins. He's earning millions right now. Of course, in uh, other parts of the world, like uh, our talents in Indonesia, etc., they also earn a lot in you know, US dollars. Some five figures, some six figures, even. Wow. Yeah. I well, know, right? Well, I should yeah. have been an uh, esports or uh, gaming pro back then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it's okay now. I'm doing the PR for them. So that's with Lazada, a lot of live streaming there. With Visa, we did a collaboration whereby we did uh, a video, you know, of like showing uh, dreams, like for Evos. Um, we turned dreams into reality, inspiring the next generation. So uh, Visa is about doing that, inspiring the next generation as well. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, we, we did a video on that. And also we did a promo whereby uh, anyone who has a Visa card who buys our merchandise, uh, they get a 50% discount. So Wow, that's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, because Visa, promo, wants, yeah. Yeah, Visa wants to reach out to the next generation. And uh, you know what? In the esports and gaming world, the life, customer life cycle of uh, individual is really long, you know, can be average 30, 40 years old, you know. Unlike traditional sports, whereby they're more older, more mature, and senior, for when you get a someone at eighteen or twenty years old, for example, wow, you, you got them for the next thirty forty years, especially wow, when they wow. got uh, disposable income. And recently, right. a few weeks ago, we signed a deal with Yamaha. You know the the bike. Wow! You know? Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I don't know. Do you ride bikes, Kiko? Uh, not much, I'm afraid. No. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I, I too, I don't have a license, but uh, yeah, in Indonesia, we did a deal with Yamaha, and uh, yeah, just to inspire the next generation as well with their one two five generosity campaign. Right. I think that's that's really interesting, right? Because we are talking about really traditional industries. Lazada is newer; it's e-commerce, but Visa mm -hmm. and Yamaha, right? Bikes. Th th these are traditional industries that have been around for decades at the very least mm -hmm. and seeing them embrace this as a way to reach as you're saying yeah right the younger generations i think it's a great way and it makes a ton of sense particularly now with the pandemic in which you know we, we are doing this as a streaming instead of doing a live event in, on some venue that's just one example but everything w turned to being far more online right and remote and perhaps previously if yamaha wanted to reach the younger generations they would have i don't know sponsored some music festival right with because yeah. they would know they would have thousands of people coming to that festival with great artists playing but that's not happening anymore hopefully our, those kinds of festivals will happen again at some time but they, they have not been happening for a year they will not happen for perhaps throughout the remaining of this year and that's just one thing that needs to be done differently. Uh, Esports sounds like a great way to to still reach these audiences, right? Yeah, Kiko, I think you hit the spot when I uh, hit the nail in the coffin. Uh, it's a sweet spot back then, even in 2020, even when the pandemic hit, traditional sports went offline, you know, no more stadiums, etc. Right. But hey, uh, I mean, uh, I'm not saying thanks to COVID, but you know, it happened and... Uh, Esports just uh, exploded, you know. Everyone is online. All the celebrities, musicians, artists, they're all stuck at home. And one of the ways to engage was uh, gaming, you know, video games. Right. And uh, a lot of uh, brands we spoke to, they kind of realized that, you know, Alan, we got to shift our marketing budgets from offline to online. Right, right. Yeah. No more billboards or... Ah, out, now... out of home, OH, billboards, etc. Everything right. is on a digital screen. And what more better way than esports? Um, I think one reason why esports and gaming is different compared to other industries is because it's sticky, you know, it's a lifestyle. 
you, uh, when I say sticky, it uh, means the customer stickiness. They don't just use it for a few seconds or a few minutes. Can go on for a few hours, you know, one hour plus, right. etc. Thirty minutes. Yeah, one match, it's a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Right. For the sh with the shorter, with the, on the games for which the matches are shorter, it's still like 15, 20 minutes of being engaged with the yeah. game, right? Yeah, I think that's every marketer's dream. You know, you don't just want someone to uh, see your product or brand placement for a few seconds. Yeah, imagine a, a live stream, right? Like right now, we are live streaming here now. And imagine a logo appearing on the bottom right or left, you know, for the next 30 right. minutes, one hour. Your brand recall is going to be super high. Um, your brand is going to have top of mind among the next generation. Man, what's... I started coming back then. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's crazy. Because also what's great with esports is that you don't you don't only have the actual tournament or the actual you know final matches. Um, there's all sorts of other com well, there's the video game itself, of course. But then, and this happened to me myself. You know, you start playing something, you're stuck, so you go to YouTube and search how other yeah. someone else is sorting that out. And there's a myriad of players, and then. Um, and then you start following a few, and then you join their live streamings, and then you watch them on tournaments. And it can be so so wide. There are so much, so many different ways to engage an audience with esports. That's right. Even like uh, F1 last year, they also pivoted to uh, online sim racing, they call it. And uh, they, they just uh, did F1 online. And the uh, beauty <laughs> about it was that it looks like the real thing, you know? It, it, just that you don't crash and you know nobody dies in that sense, <laughs> right, <you know? laughs> right right safer it, yeah it's just a virtual crash per se so it, it looks really uh, legit real so it captured a lot of audience as well f1 sim racing um there are other esports titles coming up in different forms as well you know olympics there's this there this is the second debate i was talking about olympics they say that oh they want to do esports as well etc and then uh, the, the community is like oh are we gonna have dota or league of legends inside olympics the answer is no guys no um it's gonna be in a different format whereby uh, you know olympics they have the summer olympics and they have all the federations uh, associations per se so i believe ioc the organizer for olympics international olympic committee they will instruct right. every uh association to create their own esport title so you you do cycling okay you create a cycling uh, vertical for esports under the cycling federation and if you google, google now there's cycling esports there's uh sailing e-sailing esports there's really? even wow, ice, I ice hockey that. sports. Yeah. So, you know why? I, I did some research. This is my personal opinion. Back then, uh, the previous Olympics, the average age was about 53 years old. 53 years old of an Olympic viewer, right? So they realized, okay, um, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> because the next age, the next four years, they're going to be 57, right. 61. Getting older and older, guys. <laughs> and then the sponsors will wonder, hey, uh, what's going on, guys? Uh, the viewership. Uh, yeah, yeah. We want to reach age. people in their 30s, people in their in their 20s. Mm -hmm. well, how, and all of a sudden, right. the Olympics are not an appealing enough yeah, channel, yeah. right, to do that. Oh, definitely, definitely, I feel that Olympics, uh, the people inside are like, OK, we need to, what are the young generation watching, you know? Esports, gaming, there you go. Right, right, yeah. right. That's so interesting. And considering you've been, um, you know, you, you work with this industry and, and you follow it closely, with the pandemic, would you say the adoption uh, in general increased 50%, doubled, tripled? Uh, overall, what would you say? I think average more than 50% and up to even 100% in terms of viewership, etc. cetera. Um, interesting en enough, interesting enough, before the pandemic happened, World Health Organization classified uh, gaming as a mental disorder, you know, mental disorder. Really? But, wow, I did yeah. not know that. Yeah, but of course, there's, uh, I mean, with all things, there's also good and bad, right? So we, we are being uh, transparent about it, you know, we're not hiding or beating around the bush. So there are cases like that. So to counter it, after the pandemic happened, World Health Organization say that, hey guys, gaming is good for you, you know, it's to relieve stress, etc. So like, what's going on, guys? Stay home so, and play video games. All of a sudden, yeah. it's a good thing. I know, right? <laughs> so I think the experts inside there realized that, okay, maybe um, we pushed the button too soon. I don't know. Because all right. these things are still new, you know, it's uh, ever-changing industry, evergreen. Investment yeah, is yeah. pouring in like mad, a few in the millions, left and right, in the Europe, US. 
South America and uh, all the Hollywood actors and uh, musicians realize the potential of it. Your Kanye West and your uh, uh, Michael Jordan and all that realize that, okay, you know, my time is up. I need to invest in the younger There's generation. There's this famous um, Argentinian, I know because I'm Argentinian, football player who's already well in his, to his 30s, mm -hmm. uh, not retired yet, but, you know, he doesn't have that much left in his professional career, Agüero. And, and he started playing esports and streaming that. Mm -hmm. And now, as his, uh, you know, professional sports career winds down because of his age, he's building his esports career. And that he, he can keep on doing well into his, well, I don't know, forever, right? Uh, there's yeah. no physical constraints for that, I mean. Exactly. Um, there are even uh, traditional athletes who are now pivoting towards uh, esports and gaming simply because, like you say, you know, you're not physically strained right. by uh, playing these games. Just that your mental uh, toughness and uh, your reflexes still need to be on par. Yeah. Right, 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 right. So and what about, you did mention a couple of, of uh, very interesting companies you're working with that, yeah, like Visa and Yamaha, that traditional companies that are embracing this. Mm -hmm. What has been your experience, and of course, no need to name companies, but what has been your experience with companies still reluctant to... Right explore this what are the you know objections that come up i, I think uh, most of the time it's about uh education and awareness mm. so i think it's great that uh wakana and people like self kiku is uh embracing this topic you know of esports and gaming uh there's still people out there who are very uh traditional minded because they don't understand it they don't get involved with it um how i feel is uh, i put myself in their shoes and i understand why it's because uh, let's say i watch uh, english premier league for example so if you tell me about liverpool manchester united oh yeah yeah i, I like uh, football soccer i will uh, sponsor this uh, industry or this company right but esports what's that i don't even play it but uh, if my son or daughter plays it then maybe there's a chance that, right, you know, right. maybe because they go home like what are you playing you know hey that's the same proposal i got so, <laughs> right <laughs> there's a lot of opportunities there so i see that's that's the disconnect but you know what in the next five ten years when the next generation of uh, senior executives take over and make decisions for the company they will understand it because they are in it you know Oh yeah, we used to play this game, etc. It'll be way much easier then. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. As there's these studies, these studies that you know, one of them was saying that by 2025, hmm. which is not that that <laughs> long from now, right? Um, uh, like 70% of the people in the workforce will be millennials, hmm. and the and the zillennials are of course growing and growing and. Those are the generations, the Zillennials particularly, who are now in their early 20s, perhaps. Mm. Those are the ones that, not that long from now, are going to be, you know, uh, engulfing and, and being quite protagonists in the workforce. And just as you said, right, and the example for Air Asia, in which esports also became an asset for recruiting digital talent all of a sudden uh, you know uh, right now and more and more as time goes by a company needs to hire which they will need to hire right the the the, the web developers the mobile app developers the ux designers the digital marketers uh, fresh out of college perhaps and how you are, are you going to those are already in high demand mm -hmm. how are you going to keep on attracting them and having embraced esports is definitely a great way to do so yeah you're right um even in the other comp companies in europe they realize that and they even do their own internal esports day you know gaming day in their right. companies um you, you've seen like uh, even the big fours like deloitte kpmg pricewaterhouse coopers they, they have their own esports team in like in malaysia uh their own like dora teams and then they have their uh, really? annual friendly matches yeah between the big four audit firms so it's really happening uh there are even corporate tournaments now uh happening right. as we speak uh, across various industries and even across government departments. Uh, I can speak for Malaysia because I'm part of that uh, group that is uh, looking into it. So yeah, it's very interesting. Right, right, right. Okay, okay. Well, great stuff. Um, it'll, it'll be... So first of all, I'll see whether we can do something internally in Workana because <laughs> I know we do have our fair share of, of gamers in our team 
and even those who are not might be soon right mm -hmm. turned so so uh, i'll explore it but it's also great hearing about again right what you're saying and uh, and how this can be a new way for companies particularly the the most traditional ones to engage mm -hmm. the younger audiences because otherwise that makes sense otherwise how is a big financial corporation going to reach people who only now are uh, reaching the age in which they can use the, those financial products, right? Yeah, so, so imagine uh, Team Wakana against uh, Team Stash Away or, you know? Right, example, right, you right. Know? You, you can yeah, play yeah. amongst, especially the startup world, I'm sure there are a lot of uh, young people, right? So yeah, can... yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, in the past, in our early days, for example, we would, I don't know, get together and play football with some other startups, for example. Um, uh -huh. Right now, that we cannot do, but esports, e mm. we could get started like tomorrow, right? And that's, know, right? that's the beauty of it. It's You yeah. don't need to travel. It's COVID safe. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's all online. And uh, I already know one StarCraft player in Wakana, a good one, you know? He's talking to really? me right now. <laughs> <laughs> really? Uh, I think um, um, in a, a tip for those Maybe. who want to form their own uh, esports uh, team or club internally within your company, uh, what I learned from my days back in Asia back then was to also separate it among the different game titles because uh, I, I got it wrong at first. I thought, oh, you play esports, you play games. Okay, everyone joins a big group, right? But in the big group, everyone has a different uh, interest. Right. Someone wants to play a console, another wants to play mobile, another wants to play PC. Hmm. So it's different. Someone wants and to play also FIFA. The of, also the kinds of games they like, right? Some people like racing, some other like yeah, yeah. real-time strategy. And those are mm. really different kinds of games. That's right. And the language is different. So a Dota player might not like League of Legends, vice versa. Mm. Or a, a FIFA player might not like racing, vice versa right. as well. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. You need to find the... Well, yeah, creating different groups. That makes sense. Right. Yeah. Okay, Alan. Um, this was great. I think it's. Um, I think it, some really valuable insights were here. Um, uh, so on one hand, learning how you know Air Asia, a traditional, traditional in the sense the industry is traditional, right? The company is definitely forward leaning, but it's an airline. Uh, you wouldn't <laughs> expect an airline to so quickly. Well, I mean, you know, other people told this themselves. Mm. Uh, in just six months, you were able to build from the ground up a full mm -hmm. esports program. I think that's great. And then also learning from you how how companies are using esports not only for internal team building and recruiting but also for as a marketing mm. initiative, right? To reach right. new audiences. Um because of, 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 for example, just very a very technical issue, but how long you can have your uh, logo showing up there versus a quick ad on TV or something, uh, or let alone a billboard. You just drive a, 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 mm. by a, a billboard, you barely <laughs> see it, right? right. Um, that's, yeah, yeah, really insightful and interesting. So, yeah, thank you very much for joining. It was a yeah. great conversation. Yeah, thanks, Kiku and Wakana, and uh, hope to see you on the esports field one day playing your StarCraft. Well, well, I'll I'll keep you posted. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And for everybody watching, thank you so much for for joining. Um, as mentioned, this is recorded, so you can still watch the whole thing afterwards in our channels. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll keep in touch. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye.